Hello everyone, welcome to Dryer Day's Art Studio. I'm Catherine. Thank you so much for being here today. Well, as I posted on Instagram, I was just sort of pooped out of doing so many silicone molds and coasters, etc. And I really hadn't done a geode in a long time. And with our move, I, of course, was able to go through all my inventory of panels and canvases and boards. And I found this two piece that my husband actually cut for me a long time ago, uh, probably maybe even a year ago. They're on MDF. They are about three quarters of an inch thick, half an inch thick. They're very heavy. Uh, if you watch any of my newer videos, I do primarily use birch now because it's a lot lighter but I had these and I thought I never did anything with these I really just need to do like a large piece use some stones get some texture in there so I decided to get these out and I knew I wanted to do sort of a black white and silver piece and my youngest I was kind of on the fence if I should use gold and my youngest said yeah yeah put a little gold in there so You'll see that later where I put a tiny bit in. So as you can see here, the boards are white because I prime them with two to three coats of white gesso and then sand them down. And uh, then I'm just gonna put paint down. It's just acrylic paint where I wanna see the colors of my resin. It just gives a nice backdrop and also lets me know when I'm coming in with my resin where I want the colors to go because as I also stated on my Instagram post, sometimes when I'm doing larger pieces like this, my adrenaline just really starts pumping and I feel like I'm flying kind of and I wanna make sure I get it down before it starts thickening up and curing and I wanna make sure it looks good and I know that I'm recording. So it's really nice to have the backdrop of the paint there. I did incorporate real crystal quartz in this piece. What I like to do is sort of get the get the stones out that I'm going to use. These, because I want them to stand up, I'm going to use hot glue. Hot glue dries almost immediately, so you can get it right where you want it. Hold it for a couple seconds and it's pretty much going to stay right there. When I do more of my loose stones and I just want to get them down, I will use a clear Elmer's glue for that. Something that I try to work on is to keep the edges looking finished and this just sort of dropped off right here. So I am just taking some hot glue, some tweezers, and some clear gems, gluing them right on here. And I will link everything that I'm using in the description below for you guys. Okay, yeah, all of the glitter and the pigments are available in my store, so I will share with you where you can get all of that. And, you know, I'm just going to go around, lay all these stones down where I think I want them, create the shape that I want, and once I kind of get everything down, where I like it, then I will put the glue on. Being that I'm making a resin geode, I do like to incorporate actual real stones um, that can get expensive. So I'll sometimes just add them in certain areas. This is actually a batch that I had. I had sold crystal quartz in my store, it sold out. I would like to get some more, I'm kind of shopping around. Um, but when I, broke it up myself I got a lot of kind of random bigger chunks and a lot of fine dust and I will actually take that crystal quartz dust and even just sprinkle it on top of an area and I just feel like when you're making a resin geode you should have real 
stones in there. It just adds to the energy, adds to the feel of the piece. And so I like to make sure in every single resin geode that I have some sort of natural stone in there. The more raw, the better. Um, I will be using some black tumbled stones in this as well, um, but I just really like to keep, the crystal quartz just looks so pretty in there. So just wanted to make sure I was getting plenty in this piece. These are some black obsidian tumbled stone chips that I got off Amazon. You can find them linked below. They come in varying sizes. Some are really big and some are really little, which I like. And just doing the same thing, I'm going to lay them down where I want them, kind of move them around, get them where I like them, and then I will come over them with some clear glue. I also had some black fire glass left over from another project and it went really nicely in here, gave it some extra sparkle and shine. I do take out my fire glass usually and uh, kind of wipe it off. What I do is I take a paper towel and then I make it damp and I will take sort of handfuls of the fire glass and rub it in the paper towel because it can be very dusty and I don't want that getting in my art piece and I want the glass to be as shiny and sparkly as possible. All I had was a giant gallon of the clear Elmer's glue, so I just put it in a plastic mixing cup and applied it where I needed it. It worked perfectly. I had smaller Elmer glue uh, containers, little bottles, but somewhere in the move, I don't know if they got lost, I don't know if they wouldn't pack liquids, not real sure what happened, um, but this worked out just fine. And right here I'm going to put down some silver mine. This is one of the more popular items in my store. They are small, I like to call them little nuggets of silver. I also have it in gold as well. They're just a really nice size and add a really nice texture and metallic shine to the pieces. And I will use hot glue to put those down. Uh, as you've probably noticed too, and I haven't mentioned this yet, but um, those are epoxy sculpt lines that I've put down on both of these to act as barriers. Uh, I'll include a link to how I make those in the video description below, but again, as I've also mentioned, I made these boards uh, a long time ago, almost a year ago, and just never got around to using them. Um, I haven't really used epoxy sculpt a lot lately, but it is great for forming those barriers. It's really awesome if you're new to resin and um, don't really like how the resin travels and goes all over the place. It helps to control that. It's also nice in this instance here for us to put some texture down some different glitters, some different stones, etc. Okay, so now that I have all of the texture down where I like to have it, uh, this is the first thing I do all the time on my geodes. I sprinkle some clear resin over top. We're going to use art resin today for this piece. And the reason I like to do the clear uh, is because in case there's any still loose stones, uh, like I mentioned, I did sprinkle on that quartz dust and some of the little um, silver mine pieces and the little obsidian chips. I just like to get some resin on those because when I come in with my heat gun to pop any bubbles when I start laying resin in, uh, that heat gun does force air out of the nozzle and it'll blow stuff around. And um, I like where all of this is. I don't want it moving. So this is just to help keep everything in place. I'm going to start with a new pigment to my store. This right here is gunmetal. It's a beautiful gray silver. I 
And then Urban, which is a new glitter to my store that hasn't really become very popular, so I wanted to feature it here. It's actually on sale in my store right now. It's an ultra fine glitter. So it's almost like a pigment. It's so fine um, with just brilliant, brilliant sparkle. And I'm gonna lay it in right next to my gunmetal. Look at how pretty that is. I end up using quite a bit in this piece because it's just so beautiful. And when we see the piece out in the sunlight later at the end of the video, you'll just you'll see the sparkle. And here I go, popping bubbles. And again, if I didn't have that clear over some of these stones, they would go flying everywhere. See, I mean, you can see some of my flakes actually went flying. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we want to keep that from happening. So just put that clear resin down. Um, I will say, and I'm going to kind of ask my viewers this, if you know why, uh, that center section there of the clear, where I put down the clear quartz and the clear plastic, um, you might notice at the end, it got kind of more of a yellowy tone to it. And I'm just wondering why that happened. I don't know if it's from the hot glue. I don't know. I don't know what happened. So if anybody knows why that happens, why it yellowed, please let me know, because I'm very curious. Um, you know, we were working with a white base. They were clear stones. The only thing I can think is that the resin reacted with the hot glue, um, but I'm really not sure. So here I'm using some silver pearl pigment. This is brand new to my store as well. Because I knew I wanted this area to be lighter, but um, I wanted it to have a little bit of sheen. I didn't want it to be totally flat white. This is very close to my white pigment. Um, but like I say in the description, it just sort of shines harder. It just has more of a metallic shine. And that's why I called it silver pearl, because it's not like a true silver, but um, it is just more on the metallic side. And doing some heat as I go, just to make sure I'm popping bubbles. I'm sorry that my table is such a mess. I mean, this is what happens too when I'm doing large pieces. Everything just gets spread out everywhere. It's a giant mess. Okay, now this here that I'm using is actually my sea salt glitter. I mean, once you add it to the resin, it's almost invisible. So what I was gonna do is just drizzle it in this rocky area right over the stones so that that will have a little bit extra sparkle too. Cause sometimes when we lay resin on our stones, it can lose some of the sparkle. So my hope was that the sea salt would add a little bit of sparkle in there too, but it is, it is pretty much clear. I just want to let everybody know that uh, and transparent, but it does give a subtle sparkle. And as I go, just sort of looking at the piece, seeing where I maybe want to add a pigment or a glitter and I'm going with my black pearl pigment. I love this pigment. I've been just really into the darker colors lately and this is just such a beautiful rich color. Does anyone else use their popsicle sticks like a paintbrush? <laughs> I mean, you kind of have to. What else are you going to use, right? I love my EcoArt Solutions silicone stick covers because I can just wipe them off and reuse them and I'm not wasting a bunch of sticks. I, they do have them for the smaller popsicle sticks too. I don't know why I wasn't using it. I, I was just so in the zone with this piece and distracted, but... I am using the EcoArt Solutions mixing cups and pouring cups. So if you want to check out the video description, I do have a discount code with them for 5% off. It's a great company. Uh, I myself am trying to get a lot more conscious of uh, just what I'm using in my studio as far as reusing uh, biodegradable items. And the same goes for my shop um, and even how I'm packaging things. I have a lot of things coming to just make my whole company a lot greener. Adding that clear resin really gives us some nice dimension and layering. That's why I like to have the board painted underneath too, because as you can see, there are spots that don't have any resin yet, and they might not. They might just have clear over them. And this way that back already has the color on it. It's not just plain white, and it all blends together.
This is a matte white. I wanted to have a little bit of white going through there. Now grabbing my silver metallic that I haven't gotten to use yet. And again, all of these products are going to be available at dryerdaysartstudio.com. I wanted to try to make an entire piece with just everything from my store and see if I could do it. And I could. And every day I'm just adding more products and more things that I hope you guys love. Let me know if there's anything you'd like to see in my store because I, I aim to please you all. And just adding that silver in here. And now it's kind of got a nice little barrier in there. It's not going to bleed all into the white and go everywhere unless I want it to, which you can do too. I can put a little on my stick and run it through that white area. You can see how it just blooms and blossoms when we add the clear over it. And at this point, the resin was starting to get a little bit thick on me. I've been working for quite a while. I have cut out some stuff on the video, obviously for time purposes, but... It was starting to get a little bit thick on me. I decided we needed a little bit more glitter in here and I was gonna use it along the stone line blending into the silver here. So I used some fine silver from my store. All these glitters are so sparkly. Like I don't know how to convey how sparkly these are to you. Sometimes it's even hard like right now to pick it up, you can really see it in the video shots in the sunlight, but I only carry glitter and pigments and products that I use myself and almost, I would say probably 60% of the things in my store are made in the United States. The jars that I package everything in are made in the United States. I try to keep as much within the United States as I can. It gets a little harder with the molds. Most of them come from overseas. But as far as the glitter and pigments, um, I'm supporting other businesses based in America as well. And um, like I said, I, I use them personally. I test them out before I even put them in the store. And uh, here just adding some to the white area. It's just a beautiful glitter. Okay, you might remember my little one wanted me to add some gold, so I mixed up some of my white gold glitter and sprinkled it throughout here. The white gold is almost like a champagne or an antique gold mixed with a little bit of silver in it. It's just beautiful. Everybody that has used it has told me that they just love it. So I just did a tiny sprinkling in through there um, in the quartz area and the white area. And now I'm going to do some line work. I'm going to use some gilding paint that I got at Michael's. As you can see, I still have gloves on. So this is about a little, it's probably about 22 hours after I poured this. So it's still sitting here curing. It still has the tape on the back and everything. I haven't even taken tape off because I knew that I wanted to do some accent lines. So I'm going to use the gilding paint. I'm going to use some art markers. A lot of it I'm going to do off camera because this piece just was so big and I really needed to get in there and focus on what I was doing and it was just too hard with the camera. But I will then do another clear flood coat on top of both of these once all the lines are down. So these pieces have um, two layers of resin on them. all done so if you can see what I mean by that middle part with the crystals just got kind of discolored if anyone knows why look at that urban in there oh my gosh oh my gosh that urban is such a pretty glitter and you can see where I did all the accenting in there and there are crystal quartz points standing up beautifully 
I want to show in that white area where you can see some of the white gold glitter. Silver mine giving some great texture. And there's the black pearl up there. It was kind of, it was like overcast and I was trying to catch the sun. And again, I'm trying to learn how to film outside in my new space. After uh, the overcast went away and the full sun came out, I came out to get more video. You can see how sparkly. So there's the black obsidian and then the urban, the gunmetal gray pigment. Here you can really see that black up top, that black pearl pigment. So I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I mentioned that I wasn't sure how I felt about this once it was all done. Um, I recently heard Trent Reznor. He's the lead singer from Nine Inch Nails. And they have a song that I actually really like. It's one of my favorites. And I just heard recently that he hates it. It's like his least favorite song that he's ever put out, which just amazes me because it's one of my favorites and it's one of their most popular. But he just artistically wasn't that pleased with it. And I just, it was a good reminder of, I think we as artists are our biggest critics. And that's why I like to use the hashtag over on Instagram, believe in your art, because it's so important that we keep believing in ourselves no matter what. It's so easy on Instagram to see all the gorgeous work that everyone's churning out and really get down on ourselves. But just believe in your own art, believe in yourself and keep doing what lights you up. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Come find me on Instagram at Dryer Days. And until next time, everybody, keep on pouring.